Welcome to our podcast, Tell Us a Story, a laid back place where people come in to share their gift of gab and tell us their most interesting true life stories while we talk about different topics from all over the world. Well, get ready, boys and girls. I'm already hearing it in the studio. Here comes Mrs. Worldwide. Look out. <laughs> Mrs. Worldwide is in the house. Yes, indeed. You'll get the uh, correlation of this song a little bit later as we talk to Miss Emily Reney. Did I say that right, Emily? Sure. All right, sure. Close enough. (laughs) This girl is something else. She's a little firecracker. Her smile is just as contagious as (laughs) COVID-19. And that's even if you got the shot. (laughs) Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, Frenchie, off to you. Uh, first of all, did you mean she's a fireball? Fireball. Oh, yes. Ah. I like that. You get it? All right. You get it? All right. I get it. Hey, Emily. Hey, Karina. How are you? Hola. Hola, que tal? <laughs> I'm doing great. Hola, Thank you so cita. much for having me today. It's a pleasure. Yeah, we've been looking we forward could not, to it. Exactly. I don't so, know if the listeners can tell, but I have a smile like the big, like oh, as yeah, big as my Thank face you for right saying now. That. I'm, I'm so about, excited. I'm about to describe you. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> so Emily is a little ray of sunshine, a true fun loving woman with the brightest smile. Here it goes. Aww. An energy you'd love to bottle up and sell, for sure. <laughs> Truly, I don't think she has any enemies. Everyone loves her, and it's easy to see why. She's kind, intelligent, fearless, silly, funny, and just plain all lovable. She's like your favorite Care Bear on steroids. Oh, my God. (laughs) Not sure what that means exactly, but she's all that in a bag of chips. Can't wait to dive in. Oh, my God. I love all these Americanisms that you're coming up with. It's amazing. Welcome, Thank Emily. You. Thank yeah, you so much. Awesome. Good to so see you. Awesome to hear. First question. Okay. Let's get straight into it. You're one of the funnest people that I know. And I stumbled upon you through your then studio, The Floor Nine. Mm-hmm. Um, for those who may not know or haven't paid attention, how mm-hmm. did you start the Zumba movement in our little Thibodeau community? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, it kind of happened. You. <laughs> <laughs> it happened very uh, by accident, <laughs> very organically, like I like to say. Mm-hmm. The um, I never set out to to do what I did. It just mm-hmm. at, step by step, it just got better and better and better, and it turned into one of the best you know points of my life. It was yeah. really awesome. So, um, all the way back to I guess you could start from the beginning I was a dancer my entire life so I grew up in Homa and um I danced uh competitive dancing um ballet tap jazz hip-hop all of that um and and a bag of chips and a bag of (laughs) chips exactly (laughs) um I went when I got into um high school was on the dance team and then started teaching dancing to the little ones and kind of just got like that that bug I just I always had that like I was the dancer so dancing and teaching it was yes. always something was, that you've done absolutely and it was fun for me because I can't ever um picture myself as like a teacher of like little kids you know sitting in a desk teaching a lesson that's not me right. but mm-hmm. dancing when they want to be there and uh, they you know it's yeah. something that they want to do after school they're getting their energy out that was always really something that I loved. Mm-hmm. So then coming into college, I mean, moving to Thibodeau, I didn't have that outlet anymore. So, um, so you were new too. I was new to too. Thibodeau. Exactly. Oh. And now we were looking back. Um, this year marks I've been living in Thibodeau longer than I lived in home. Oh, oh wow. wow! And so now I feel yeah. I really do feel like I'm from Thibodeau. Now. Oh. <laughs> Is that how it like, goes? My mom even calls me one of those Lafushians, and I'm like, oh. listen, oh. listen. <laughs> I'll always have a part of Bayou Black in my heart, but oh. I really do love Thibodeau. So awesome. I, I came to Nichols and um, kind of just got so involved with you know my sorority and working and school and, and, school and, and mm-hmm. you know and all of that. And um, dancing kind of just like went by the wayside. Mm-hmm. So um, four years, you know, I graduate and I look back 
I was 40 pounds heavier at college graduation than I was nice. at my high school graduation. <laughs> I was like, when did that happen? Like, but, you know, I didn't have, I didn't change any of my eating habits. Mm-hmm. I, I was adding drinking to the mix, you know, mm-hmm. a whole different lifestyle. And right. 10 pounds over the course of a year sneaks up on you and 40 pounds oh, yeah. over 40 years really sneaks up. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So I was like, oh man, I got to do something. And so... I kind of just had that on my, I would try to go to the gym, try to do, you know, um, elliptical and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Nothing r- really, like, I never wanted to go to the gym. Oh, yeah. Right. So then a couple years go by. In 2008, um, Gustav was coming, mm-hmm. and it was coming right for us. And so we evacuated my, um, I, well, I evacuated to my family's house in Jackson, um, and David, my husband, stayed behind because he works in the oil field and he's a firefighter. So he's an yeah. emergency responder and stuff like mm-hmm. that. So, um, so I went to Jackson and ended up staying for like almost three weeks just because we we didn't have power. Nothing was right. going on. Like I, we were, I was just like, I had a shop. It took a, a while during Gustav too. Yeah, it did. And I had a shop at the time, actually right next to your mama's mm-hmm. shop, and um, yep. she always took care of me. Um, and we were just like, that. no one was shopping at that yeah. point. So I was like, well, I'm yeah. going to just stay until we know electricity's back. The mail's <laughs> running. Like I'm going to let all the big kids do what they need to do. Uh-huh. And then I'm going to come yeah. back. Yep. So in that process, my aunt's a, um, a registered dietitian. And, um, and so in that process, she was like, well, do you want me to add you to my gym membership? And I was like, sure. Like I'll do a guest pass or whatever. And I went and there was this, she was like, you got to try this class called Zumba. And I was like, well, what is, what is that? Like, I had never even heard of it before. Mm -hmm. She was like, just go and just try. You're going to love it. It's it's dancing, but like, it's working out. I was like, okay. I was hooked, y'all. Like first eight count. I was like, this <laughs> I can relate. is amazing. I love this so much. Oh my God. Oh my God. So, um, came back home, you know, got back into my routine um, bought all the the DVDs from mm-hmm. uh, like I looked it up and like they d- bought the DVDs was doing the DVDs with my friend Rebecca one day mm-hmm. like at her apartment and we kind of let like the DVD had ended and we kind of let it like play for mm-hmm. a little while mm-hmm. we were just talking and then an infomercial came on and was like, D- could you see yourself being a Zumba instructor? And I was like, oh my God, yes, I totally could see that. And Rebecca, to me. She, right, Rebecca looked at me and she was like, you have to do this. Like, this is you. Like, this is what you were meant to do. And I was like, I think I'm going to do Absolutely. it. Absolutely. So um, I looked up where the trainings were and everything. And the closest one was Port Arthur, Texas. So I was like, oh, that's kind of far. So I called my friend Haley, who I danced with forever. And I was like, Haley, there's this thing called Zumba. And I want to do it. And I think you'd be good at it. You want to do it with me? She was like, I don't know what that is. But yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> she was, she's my friend that's like down for anything. Like, I'm let's go. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> so we went to Port Arthur and we got trained. And um, mm-hmm. and it's a, it's so crazy how it just all like worked out. So I got trained, came back to Thibodeau and I'm like, Mm-hmm. now what you know like <laughs> I wouldn't want I'm to, a professional Zumba right, teacher exactly now. I just have nowhere to teach and nobody to teach it mm-hmm. <laughs> you know so um I called Miss Margo down the street Miss yep. Margo Bataglia mm-hmm. had a right. dance studio down the street she still has it mm-hmm. and um it was during the summer and I was like hey I, I'm trained in this thing called Zumba I, it can I use your studio for a couple of nights a week just to kind of like try it out and like put my class together and see you know, just see what it see is. What right. See what happens. See what happens. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, she's like, yeah, sure. So I got like five or six of my friends together one night. We went to Miss Margot's studio and I was like, don't laugh. Okay. This is what this is. You know, I'm, I'm a professional. I'm going to press play. <laughs> and I was like, if I mess up, don't laugh at me. And they're like, how would we know? Like, mm. we, this is like, <laughs> this brand new. You could do anything up there. We wouldn't know, you know, yeah, and uh, pressed play. And we had a uh, blast like just had so you know I mean we just had so oh, I know. much yeah. fun and like nerves I, I don't ever really get like nervous when it comes to dancing mm-hmm. but I had never like taught adults before I right. don't like teaching kids you mess up and you're just like yeah you know like you're whatever moving it. on you know winging it an adult it has it's a different it's a different dynamic you mm-hmm. know so I was kind of nervous about teaching adults and um and it just it went so smoothly I, I mean, like, you do it so naturally, it, honestly, well, thank and you. so much fun. Thank you. And it, it, it was, it was just so much fun. Like there was nothing forced, nothing, you know, awkward. 
it was just pure fun. I just remember when I would go twice a week. Uh huh. I was in such good shape. Yeah. I was like, my ass is made out of semen. Right? Exactly. <laughs> anyway, you go to can use the best. Can we ass on the podcast? Yeah. <laughs> yes, you can. Absolutely. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, you can. <laughs> um, and so sore. Like you're walking around like you have like swagger, but you're really just sore. Like just I just so remember the sore. first time I went, literally I thought, okay, same thing. I was a dancer for 19 years. Mm-hmm. I walk all the time. No big deal. I went to her class. I went back home and I fell asleep for an hour. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I woke up and I was achy. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> what did I just get myself into? But like you said, just the energy. Mm-hmm. And I kind of stumbled upon your studio really by accident. And I thought, I need to do something fun. The same thing, Jim. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. But you have that, to do something yeah. fun. That's the only way to really like stick to uh, exercise routine or a new life habit really is it has to be something you want to do. Mm-hmm. You know, right. like it can't be something that you're forced and it's not going to last. No, absolutely. You know, yeah. so from from Ms. Margo's from that night, I asked her, I was like, can we come back on Thursday? And she was like, yeah, you, you can come any Tuesday and Thursday for the rest of the summer. Like I'm right. not I'm not using the studio during the summer. I was like, great. So I asked that group of friends – would y'all want to come back? And they mm-hmm. were like, yeah. I was like, okay, well, I, like if each one of y'all like ask somebody to come, you know, we can have a bigger class and it'll be $4 a class. And like, yeah. I thought that that, I was like, are y'all okay with that? Like, <laughs> I don't know, like $4 a class, it seems Ouch. like a lot. <laughs> and, <laughs> but at the time there was no group fitness in Thibodeau. It was yeah. all gyms. $4 you know? a class. And, right. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Raking out. in the bucks, <laughs> right? That's awesome. And so um, that Thursday, my friends not only asked a friend, but asked like two or three friends. And Mm -hmm. we ended up having like 30 something people in that class. And um, I had put it out on Facebook too, like, hey, you know. When Facebook was still a baby. It was still a a baby. baby. Yeah, Mm -hmm. yeah, it was still a baby. Um, This was like 2010. Um, so, but between Gustav in 08 and like my first class, mm-hmm. two years had passed mm. just from, you know, doing All the DVDs the, yeah. and, and, you know, <laughs> finding the infomercial <laughs> randomly. I mean, yeah, right. like, thank you infomercial. <laughs> thank you infomercial. Like I didn't even know that was like, I could do that. Like it never crossed my mind, like becoming an For instructor. For me, it's the connection between I see something that random and then I, mm-hmm. it actually turns into something real yeah you know mm-hmm. yeah it was so crazy so um so that next night 30 people came the next night 100 people came oh wow and i was like oh shit uh-huh. <laughs> what am i gonna do because we can only fit 30 people oh, so awesome. um i was like look the first 30 people it, it's upstairs so i was like mm-hmm. first 30 people go on upstairs i'll be up in five minutes the rest of the people i was like i'm i'm willing to teach a second class after right. this one. Like I'll teach mm-hmm. two tonight just because you came, you took the time to come out. Like mm-hmm. you, you don't you even know. know. It's and just it, two in one night. It's hard. Oh, I can <laughs> it's imagine. Crazy. It's hard. I can imagine. So, um, a few, and I was like, look, I understand if a few of y'all want to go home, like you were expecting to be mm-hmm. here for an hour. Now you're going to be here for two. You right. know, I get it. So, um, and you know, a few people left, but a lot of people stayed. So from that point on, I was teaching two classes every Tuesday and Thursday oh, wow. all summer. Had to start getting a waiting list going. That's awesome. um, and then when the waiting list hit a hundred people, I was like, I gotta figure something out. And also, it's the end of summer. Miss Margot needs her studio back. <laughs> you know, it's gonna be amazing. five dollars. So, <laughs> not yet. Inflation hadn't hit just uh. yet. But no. Um, so I started thinking of places, and that's when the Civic Center happened. So. Um, I moved the classes to the civic center, went back to one, one class a night. Cause we yeah. had the room. Mm-hmm. I called everybody on the wait list and I, y'all, it was like Christmas morning calling oh, wow. everybody. Like, I'm like, hi, <laughs> this is Emily. I don't know if you know me. And they're like, are you the Zuma girl? Am I in? Am I in? I'm like, yes, you're in. Did I get, in? Did I get the golden ticket? <laughs> right. That's I a in. golden ticket. Yeah. Right. And yeah. so, um, yeah, I had over a hundred people in class, um, uh, Monday through Thursday at the civic center for years. Um, and it was just magic. What it was a crazy, just magic. Crazy That's great. Yeah. yeah. That's great. And then, so that kind of turned into having my studio. I had the shop. Um, this was taking over my life. It was so much fun. I w- it was actually pretty lucrative, you know, like, um, 
I was still at $4 a class, but teaching over a hundred people a oh, night sure. for four nights a week, yeah, you know, right. it's, it's making bank. You know? <laughs> so, All yeah. while you were having fun. <laughs> right. Exactly. I'm like, and I, so I started Definitely. doing, started oh, yeah. doing the math and I was like, I'm making more money one hour a night than I am sitting in this shop eight hours a day, That's you true. know? Yeah. So, yeah. um, and people started asking about morning classes and mm-hmm. things like that. And so I was kind of just like, all right, I'm doing this. I'm mm-hmm. switching gears and I'm doing it. It's not, and I knew I was like, it's not going to last long. Fitness trends fade, right. you know, everything fades. It's all sure. a cycle, but yep. I'm young. I don't have, at that point I didn't have any kids. It was like, I'm just jumping in. So I'm just all in do all, it. how long have you done it? So I got trained in 2010. So mm-hmm. 13 years now. Oh, wow. <laughs> Yeah, so <laughs> that's I, amazing. I opened really? the studio in 2011, mm-hmm. and that's where we met. You know, yeah. I, what, what year did you start coming? 14. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and by that time we were well established. With um, you know, we, I was walking down the street. I heard the music. I was like, I need to check this out. Yeah. <laughs> I saw her. She was signing people in, and I was like, mm. What's going on in here? <laughs> <laughs> and she told me, I'm teaching Zumba. Same thing. I don't know what that is, but I need to come. Yeah. And like, the next time I yeah. came for the class. Put your workout clothes on. Come on Tuesday. Yeah. I got a spot for you. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. And um, it was love at first sight for her. For I mean, as soon I as she know. walked in, I was like, <laughs> I'm going to know that girl. I'm going to know her. Bestie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then her firecracker of a mom would come mm. every now and then oh, when she was visiting from yes. France. And yeah. oh, man. Mm-hmm. She would say, Emily. You put bit Pitbull in the playlist. I love the Pitbull. I love the Pitbull. I'm like, me too. That's you a know spot it. on uh, yeah. impression of mom. <laughs> that is my mom. Like, you know we're going to have some kind of Pitbull in this. I don't know what it is about Pitbull, but his music is just infectious, and it makes me want to dance. Like, everything. It just makes me want to dance. And so I always have at least one Pitbull song. Yes. Well, speaking of Pitbull, uh, I'm, I met you at that concert. We kind of... Uh, yeah showed up together there and um i didn't really know how much of a fan i was of pitbull i knew like one song yeah but from the start of that concert to the end of that concert the energy level was just unbelievable so right. can you talk about that a little bit ever had a chance to meet him anything like that i have actually so really yeah I'm jealous I, I know, right <laughs> it wasn't one-on-one but um mm-hmm. as a group so we had um, Zumba convention once a year in Orlando, Florida. Mm-hmm. And um, so I went the first year I was a Zumba instructor. I went to convention and um, Pitbull and Wyclef Jean were there mm-hmm. and they did. Oh my God. Right. They did a live Zumba class with Beto, who's the originator of Zumba. Oh. Um, so they were doing a concert. Sorry. <laughs> they were no, doing good. a concert. Wyclef Jean and Pitbull while Beto was teaching a Zumba class. So we were dancing to their live concert. Oh, wow. It was amazing. And <laughs> he did awesome. you even pay attention? I know. I know. He did a hey, meet. Hey, Pitbull, and- it's, it's me. me. Hey, look, it's me. It's me. I'm your biggest fan. Right? <laughs> they did a little meet and greet after. So I was able to you was know, it do it a cute little like. Was oh, it super cute? Super cute. Shorter than you would think in real life. Like, it's, it's so weird. But very pragmatic very what's the one thing that you would say about him that maybe people don't know he smells really good Ooh. yeah he smells wait, really wait. really good Ooh. Ooh, la, la. Ooh, la, la. <laughs> he smelled really really good even after a concert i'm like how is this how is this possible maybe it's the latin blood maybe so maybe so but even I, his blood smells good <laughs> his sweat it's his sweat his sweat smells really good um but one thing about that concert you know, I, I thought that the first concert I went to was really fun just because it was a Zumba class and we were up mm-hmm. and we were dancing and, you know, mm-hmm. it, it, the energy in the room is so high. But even just as a regular concert goer last year when he came to um, to New Orleans. It was unbelievable. It was so awesome. The energy is so high. And like, I've seen him at Jazz Fest a couple of times too. He's yeah. come and mm-hmm. it's really, it was a really, really okay, cool now you're just showing off. <laughs> right. <laughs> I know him personally. <laughs> We're doing I Thanksgiving know. together, right? He taught my kid how to ride a bike. Yeah. <laughs> he, he signed this song. It's right here. <laughs> no, okay, but, you win. Uh, right? <laughs> but I, I just thought he's such a gracious performer. He is. Like he yeah. wants to be there. He loves what he does. Mm-hmm. You know how you can you can kind of see you can kind of tell when an artist yeah. is phoning it in or when they're tired or mm-hmm. when they're like. When he's he, not tired. He's, he's not a tired. Yeah. 
Yeah. But he, I, I think, see what you did. I th- <laughs> <laughs> you see, I'm, I'm paying attention oh. all mm. the time. So funny. But you kind of said mm. the same thing, the generosity about him, the way oh, he, he, he just seemed extremely himself. humble. And, yes. and that just makes everybody love uh, mm-hmm. love performers even more. Yeah. And that smile. Genuinely yeah. happy to yes, be there. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, he's touring with Enrique Iglesias and Ricky see. Martin right now. So. Oh, that would be a great mm-hmm. concert. We need to, like, We need to go to, like, Miami. Yeah. I mean, if we must. We, I mean, yes. you have to. Miami. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. This is, and maybe we'll stay there. It would be a disservice if we didn't it, go. Yes. yes. <laughs> to humanity. This, <laughs> to humanity. <laughs> and, you know, I'm thinking mental health. Everybody says it's so important. Boom. It's there we true. Go. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Think about your brain and your mind. Mm-hmm. Just, yeah. yeah. You got to do it. Yeah. So I've also heard you're a big fan of Dolly Parton. Is that true? I am. Oh, I'm, I'm, I have I'm a kind wide of a little tongue tied where to go next on this yeah, one. Yeah, I have a wide but, uh, <laughs> range of musical uh, yeah. loves. It's like uh, y'all should start a fan club, I'm thinking. I'm looking across <laughs> the table, and there's so many similarities between you guys and Dolly. All y'all need right? is like the, the what blonde. What are you talking about? We got the well, blonde. I, I can't really <laughs> expand on that. But yeah. Let's just say y'all, y'all got a good head start. <laughs> it's the hair, isn't it? It's the hair. It's the hair. Yes. <laughs> I applaud you, both of you. <laughs> Too funny. Thank right. you. So my love for Dolly started out when I was really young. Like I was a little girl and growing up in Bayou Black, mm-hmm. um, growing, I was the first grandchild on my dad's side for six. I was the only grandchild for six years. And I lived, oh. yeah, lived next door to my grandmother, who, who is a professional seamstress. So at any given moment, she would have like, Velvet and this, you know, this is in the eighties. So Aww. velvet, rhinestones, lace, gold lame, uh, um, you know, all of like the, that's where you got your love silk. for accessories. <laughs> yes, and stuff. yes, and she would let me dress up in her oh, yeah. her costumes and like with her material. And she would teach me. She's like, "This is velvet. This <laughs> is oh my god, organza." I like I knew the names of these these luscious fabrics and everything. And we would listen to Dolly Parton. She would put it on. um on the it wasn't cmt at the time but it was it, maybe it was like pbs or something where they would play old country mm-hmm. concerts so yep. we were mm-hmm. listening to like johnny cash dolly parton um you know june carter listening to all kinds of fun you know and it was just in the background mm-hmm. but every time dolly would come on i like like my, i had stars in my eyes i just thought she was the most beautiful thing like she yeah. had like the big hair and the red lips and the glitz and the glam and i just like mm-hmm. loved her so much and i was very glittery as a child <laughs> like if you would ask me what's your favorite color like i would say glitter, glitter. <laughs> like, you're a unicorn I, right? I knew it exactly like i met a unicorn and, and my family is so like down the earth and nature mm-hmm. and like my, my dad is like a hunt hunter fisher you mm-hmm. know man's man like in the oil field yeah. my, my mom is not like let's go shopping or let's do this she's very just like let's chill you know so they're like where is she getting this from like i'm like dolly i got it from dolly <laughs> and mom <laughs> my, my grandma that i live next door to so um I'm still the the one in the family that like if if it's shiny or sparkly, they're like, Emily, do you want this? I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the first time we went out to dinner and you were so dressed up. She looked like a Greek goddess. She oh my had, gosh. Like, everything. <laughs> the hair up, the gold. And I was like, that's the way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. And even at the studio, you, you would say you always have to have your earrings mm-hmm. and some lipstick, lipstick and possibly the nails done. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So... You know, like Southern Belle par, par, par excellence. Yes. <laughs> um, so my grandma has all of these like isms. And one one of her isms is um, a woman without earrings is like a house without gutters. It works. It just doesn't look very nice. Wow. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> Words to live by. Yeah. She I also said, always carry a big purse because the bigger your purse is, the smaller your butt looks. <laughs> ah. Good well, advice. That's really good advice. <laughs> that's a smart grandma right there. <laughs> that is so funny. Yeah. Another thing about Dolly, though, like she, uh, going back to like the graciousness, like mm-hmm. she is, she is so kind and yeah. just like kind hearted and kind spirited. She, she has never had like a mean spirited bone in her body. And even being like conservative country music, like she won't, 
shame anybody. She she will not talk bad about people. Like, yeah. and let's talk about the fact she's such a great songwriter. Yes, I've actually oh discovered gosh. some songs not knowing it was th- they right? were hers. Yeah, and I thought, wow, that's that's amazing. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think that's probably the one thing that um keeps people relevant, maybe right. especially in that business. But oh yeah, her songs are unbelievable. Absolutely, and I mean her voice. I know it's like nothing other and she does so much for the community in Mm -hmm. Tennessee I don't know if you've ever been to like the the Knoxville um Mm -hmm. Gatlinburg Pigeon Forge area Mm -hmm. we have several times y'all like they're like Dollywood Dolly Mm -hmm. World like Dolly's Dolly's candy Mm -hmm. shop Dolly's material shop Mm -hmm. like everything and like she supports that town so much and then the Imagination Library I don't know if y'all if you've heard about that Dolly's Imagination Library Um, I don't I, think so. Geez. Tell us about it if you know. Hey, okay, well, sure. So her dad, growing up, was illiterate. He did he did not oh. know how to read and write. Mm-hmm. He could sign his name, and that was it. Yeah. And um, when she made it big, she made a commitment to Tennessee. Oh, education to, for education, mm-hmm. and you know, early childhood intervention, and you know, reading programs and things like that. And so she started in Tennessee. Um, every child from the time they're born gets one age appropriate book a month until they're five. So when on their fifth birthday, when they're going to kindergarten, they have 60 books in their possession. Oh, wow. And it, she has now expanded it all over the country and they've mm. done over a million books. Oh, that is amazing. So, yeah. Yeah. And that's really that's important. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. And it helps young writers, like new up and coming writers. If you get on Dolly, it's basically like Oprah's book club, but for kids, because like <laughs> if you go. get on Dolly's Imagination Library, like mm-hmm. you're, you're set I'm going to write a song at, when we end this. Okay. <laughs> and then send it to, to, to Dolly. Make this a book, please. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I have a serious question for you. Okay. Adoption. Yeah. That's something you're really passionate about, right? Mm-hmm. Can absolutely. you tell us why? Sure. So... It's always kind of been part of my family. You know, growing up, I had a cousin who was adopted and then later found out that my grandfather and his brother were adopted. Okay. Um, My grandfather was adopted from Canada um, and his brother was adopted from California. Um, Fun fact, my great grandmother, his mom that adopted him is, is well known in South Louisiana. She was Alligator Annie. So, um, oh, as in the swamp tour, the swamp tour lady, yeah. Oh. So she had a pilot's license when when women in the fifties did not Holy have pilot's God. licenses, forties yeah. <laughs> and fifties. Um, and yeah, her and her husband would travel around, and they were ready to settle down. And um, went to Canada and adopted my grandpa. Went to California, adopted, adopted his brother, came back home and raised him. That is him. amazing. And yeah, and he was. Um, So my great grandfather was in the oil field and he was stationed in Cuba. So they actually, he, he, Oh my God, we just went full circle. I know, right? The whole (laughs) world. (laughs) Cuba. He's my grandma. Miami, Cuba. (laughs) (laughs) What more do we need? I know, I know. I've got, I've got that, uh, that Cuban, that Cubano, Espanol, Spanglish blood. (laughs) I mean, it made sense. (laughs) Right? Um, But he spent his first five years of life in Cuba. Mm-hmm. And then they saw the revolution starting to mm-hmm. to boil up, and so they came back home. Um, so I always knew that was part of like our our heritage, our background. And I was like, oh, that would be awesome to to do that one day, you yeah. know. Right. Um, and kind of just had it in the back of my head. Um, and then you know, David and I got married. We were gonna have this a five year plan because we we got married really young. We were married in '06, and. Um, People are like, well, when are you having babies? I'm like, I'm still a baby. Like, I'm. <laughs> so we we would say 2011, 2011. That's our yeah. five year plan. We're mm-hmm. we're not even gonna think about babies till 2011. And then that mm-hmm. kind of made people just like stop asking mm-hmm. for a while. You know, get the I pressure know. off. You know? Yeah, it's um, very stressful. Yeah, and then, so 2011 came and went, and then 12 came and went, 13 mm-hmm. came and went. And we're like, ooh, something. You know, something's going mm-hmm. on. You know, so. We went through our infertility troubles. We um, we went to a specialist. We did IVF a few times, and um, it just nothing worked. And I ended up having um, a one point sixteen embryos that I was. Oh my goodness! Yes, yeah, so that that were little Rennies, like they were Emily and David in a little petri dish. <laughs> and I was like, "What are we gonna do?" I was, I was like, "We'll just be the Duggars of South Louisiana. Like that's just <laughs> that's just what it is, you know." Mm-hmm. Um, but we. 
we, I don't want to say spent them, but like we use them as mm-hmm. appropriately, like did transfers and transfer mm-hmm. after transfer, just like nothing would work. So we had one left and I was done. Like, I was just like, I can't, I can't I mean, do this pain, anymore. The, 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 the stress, pain, the hormones, the, yeah. like, um, the, even the creativity, like my yeah. outlet was being creative you know, doing these dances, mm-hmm. having fun with you guys. And I, you could put a song on and I could care less. Like mm. I, I was putting on a show, which was also very detrimental to my mental health too. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the thing that I would do to make myself happy. Like I was forcing myself to do in pain. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. I could feel yeah. my ovaries shaking around when we were doing salsa. <laughs> I was like, Oh my God, this is sucky. This sucks. sucks. Um, so I well, finally... you were definitely a trooper. I can <laughs> thank say that you. Much. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, you know, one day it just was the light bulb when I told Dave and I was like, I think I'm ready. I know we have one embryo left, but I think I'm ready to talk about adoption. And he, he was like, I have been waiting so long for you to say that. He was like, I didn't want to be pushy, but Mm -hmm. I really feel strongly that we should do this. And Mm -hmm. so that's awesome that you're both on the same page because it's not always a given, I think. Right. Yeah. 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 And um, just the fact that he was like, I've been waiting patiently. And I'm like, why didn't you say something? You know, like, you know, but I he, think it's a delicate subject, it is. even within a couple, you know, it is. It is. So um, that's when we started the journey. And, you know, if it took us, we were trying from 2011 to 2015. Mm-hmm. And we did IVF in 13, 14, and 15. Mm-hmm. Five, but between those three years, we did IVF five times. <laughs> yeah. So we were trying really hard for four years and then we decided we were adopting mardi gras of 15 we had our book done by july and we had a baby in our arms by the end of september wow wow yeah so it was like that was such a god thing like that it was such a god thing they Mm -hmm. were it was just it it, all everything just happened and i would even like looking back on the timeline like when I decided, like, okay, it was around Mardi Gras, you know, like when I was like, yes, we're doing adoption, we're mm-hmm. doing adoption, we're adopting, like that is also the timeline of like the birth mother finding out she's pregnant. Like, yeah. oh, I was expecting wow. a child when Rhett was being like made. Like, I don't know how else to like, <laughs> no, like it blows my yeah. mind. Like, she was expecting him when mm-hmm. I, when my heart was expecting him. Aww, yeah. you know? he was meant for you. Yeah, yeah that's I'm like, awesome. it, it's just it lined up so perfectly. And he looks just like her husband, which is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> he does. We've all said that from yeah. the get go when he, we from, first saw from him. From the time he was yeah. born, and it's just like every year they look more and more alike. I know it's so strange. And every year he acts more and more like I do. So <laughs> <laughs> that's a good thing. Right? It is. It's a good thing. <laughs> well, there was no escape in that, right? Right. Yeah, no, they yeah. we actually had a, a dermatology appointment earlier today for him and he had all the nurses cracking up because mm. they're used to just asking a question and like a kid being like, yeah, no, or like school was good or whatever. Well, they ask him a question and it's on like he <laughs> he is just He's like our next podcast running with podcast it. Yes. Uh, <laughs> oh, yes. And stay he tuned. Had- podcast for kids, for kids coming soon to you. <laughs> oh, y'all, me he would Rini. love that. <laughs> he would Rini. absolutely. Just We've actually him- discussed it. We're going to do a kids episode in, in the near future. That would be awesome. Yeah. Just get him talking about Dog Man or Pokemon, <laughs> and you will have an hour of content immediately. Yeah. <laughs> that is so funny. <laughs> okay, for all of our guy listeners out there who have uh, kind of tuned out when you started talking about ovaries and stuff, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to bring it back to the guy <laughs> side of things with okay. some food. So how about it, Emily? Love food. What is your... <laughs> Favorite place to go out and eat and why? Or favorite cuisine or okay, so both? I can Favorite cuisine, something that a lot of people, people that know me know this about me, but people that just know of me do not know that I do not like seafood. Like, mm-hmm. at all. I will not eat seafood. Strange for yeah. a Louisiana yeah. girl. I know. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll, I don't eat gumbo. Yeah. So I mean. I'll always say it's more, weird. more for yeah. y'all. You know, it's more for y'all. <laughs> invite yeah. me, Still invite me to the crawfish bowl and the crab bowl. I'll go have fun and drink with y'all, but I ain't eating that. Right. So, um, cuisine-wise, it's not South Louisiana Cajun food. Yeah. It's my favorite. I love, you know, Greek, Italian, Mexican, of course. But mm-hmm. Cuban. Yes. <laughs> my f- absolute favorite place to go right now is mm-hmm. Jack Rose in New Orleans. Oh, my God. Please, I don't, we haven't tried. We, we've tried to go. 
but we haven't mm. made it for okay. whatever reason it, in the universe. It is so good. because The reason I love it so much, they have a staple menu. They have like a, a steady menu mm -hmm. that is delicious. Like just mm -hmm. like everything you put in your mouth is just like fireworks. And this is what type of cuisine? Well, it's hard to say. I guess it's, ah, I guess it would be like steakhouse meets uh, farm to table. Ah. Maybe Ooh. you know everything's fresh. There's you not got really, her informed the table. Yeah, so yeah. 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 It's not we really like do. you're not looking at the menu being like this is Italian or this mm -hmm. is Mexican, but it's just very good, like very curated, really great dishes. Is this what they mm -hmm. call the uh, Nouvelle American cuisine? Maybe so. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of it mixed might of like the Europeans exactly. With an American twist. Yeah. Well, you're going to laugh. Okay, wait, so wait, let me go back. Because <laughs> this is funny. So they have their standard menu, but they also have a guest chef every six weeks, every six to eight weeks yep. that has their own chef's menu. That so is cool. The last time we went, the chef was from Brazil. Ooh. Like, so you're going to have like all these like very awesome Brazilian dishes. And, mm -hmm. the, but the next time you go, you'll still have your standard menu, but it's going to be another Norwegian. Completely, yeah. Yeah. And completely different. And mm -hmm. so that's what I really love about it. But then, you know, you know, going, oh, I if go. you don't, if you don't care for what's on the chef's menu, what's on the standard menu is going to like rock your socks every time, mm. you know? So, right. but we had to laugh because there's a thing when there, it's like, um, I, I don't remember exactly what it is, but it's fish in the bag. And it said poisson. And I was like, oh. <laughs> en and, I guess so. I don't know. In a bag, you open the yeah. bag and the steam comes out. Papillot. Well, of course, like me and my friends. I'm teaching so, you. You ready? Papillot. Papillot. Very good. Okay. Me and my friends, of course, are, you know, silly. And <laughs> we can't just have a serious dinner. So we saw it and I was like, oh, passant. And we started the um the song from The Little Mermaid that the chef sings when he's about to kill the fish. And he's like, eh, passant, eh, passant. He, 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 ha, ha, ha. And we had like three tables. We had to come and sing <laughs> <laughs> like the three tables around us singing the little mermaid. <laughs> Jacques. Jacques is his name, right? Is it Jacques? I don't remember. Be our guest. Be our yeah. guest. <laughs> Jack is the is the little shrimp who's always oh. uh, everything has to be clean. Yeah, yeah. Uh. Um, but lobster is Sebastian. 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 Yeah, but we were oh we just had the best time. But yeah, that's my favorite place to go right now. It's nice. it's an experience meal. Like you you really can make an entire we've made an entire weekend of it before because it's inside the Pontchartrain Hotel, which is one of the oldest hotels mm -hmm. in New Orleans. So you get a room mm -hmm. there. The ba there's a bakery and coffee shop at the at the Ooh. in the lobby that is where Huey P. Long used to take the, his morning meetings. Mm. So it's like if you got to the table in time, you had a meeting with Huey P. If not, oh well, get check time tomorrow. <laughs> you know, that's so pretty there, cool. There's so much Poisson? history. Poisson? Poisson? Oh. Yeah. yeah. And by then, the way, she's the one who got me hooked to uh, or not hooked, but told me about Domenica. Oh yeah. Oh, it's we love Domenica. Her. Mm -hmm. Dominica. Dominica's yes. amazing. And then mm. on the rooftop, they have Hot Tin, which is a rooftop bar. Um, and you can see it's 360 views of New Orleans. So it's okay, just, we have to it's go. my favorite yep. place. It yep. really is my favorite place locally right nice. now. Under the sea. <laughs> <laughs> what do you love to do for your me time? Oh my God. Whenever you have when me time. When I have me time. <laughs> is there me time? Um, yeah, there's some me time every now and then. I mm. really do love listening to podcasts. Like, that's one of my favorite things. Like, How about that? I know, oh, right? Look at that. So, um, when you asked me to be one of this, I was like, yes, <laughs> of course. I love it. We. Oui. <laughs> oui. um, so, I'll listen to podcasts normally in the morning when I'm doing my makeup or if I'm in my car by myself, like that. I really love to listen to mm -hmm. podcasts. Mm -hmm. um, Armchair Experts, one of my favorite absolute favorite with Zach Shepard yeah um he has experts on but then he also has like um star you know movie stars and famous people and then sure. they have which I think would be really fun for you guys to do it's called armchair anonymous where they <laughs> y'all they put out a prompt like tell us about like this week it was um Tell us about um, when you worked in the service industry, what was the craziest thing that happened to you? And people oh. call in and tell them. And oh. it's insane. Yeah. Some of this stuff. So it's like, <laughs> That's you know, cool. as like the director or the producer, you have no control over what somebody's <laughs> right. about to yeah. say. Right. You know? That's true. But, uh, but it, it's really, really entertaining. So I love to do that. Um, I love getting 
my nails done, facials, massages, you know, the the normal glitzy, glammy stuff. Yeah. Um, and then because I love sparkle is your favorite that's color. My favorite after color. all. <laughs> that's right. And I really, really love the beach. Just any chilling. Any yeah, any body of water. Uh, I so really we need love. to go to Cuba. Mm-hmm. With Pitbull. Mm-hmm. At the beach. At the beach. Uh, yeah, with course. some drinks yes. and a pretty dress. And a pretty dress. Mm. All made up. And earrings. And earrings. And red lips. Don't forget the. And do a Zumba class. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? For the locals. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> I think they would teach us a thing or two, probably. Right, right. Is there something that people don't know about you that you would like to share, possibly, with us? Sure. This is not my story, right? No, this no, is no. Just no. A random no, no. Fact. There. Don't jump the gun now. Okay. All right. <laughs> so, because I know this is all about the story. Oh, it's all about. Uh, it's, it's not actually. It's about everything. Everything. Good. Yes. Good. Um, so, something that a lot of people don't know about me is I really do enjoy alone time. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm mm-hmm. on a lot of the time, and so when I mm-hmm. when I can kind of decompress and just like be alone with my thoughts just or connect a little bit connect to nature mm-hmm. yeah like i love being like barefoot in the grass it's one of my favorite feelings. but you still have mm-hmm. earrings on right yes <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. i bet you take the trash out and you put lipstick on before i don't take the trash out or put my own gas <laughs> <laughs> see, see, she's the, so not only is she the southern uh, belle but i'm she's gonna do the smart man girl. thing and not come in <laughs> Keep going, Emily. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love her. Those, those are my two. Those are my two isms that, like, I'm just like, that's not gonna happen, you know. Well, I, could t- I, I could tell you, I feel you on that alone time, that me time, a mm-hmm. lot of times, and and she'll tell you that too. I, I just, I need that. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think we uh, all so do. Understand. Yeah, we all do. We yeah. get we get a little bit of, um, like, I get overstimulated very easily. Mm-hmm. Um, you just recharge. I, yeah, exactly. we all need that. I exactly. agree. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. He's a bear in a cave. That's what I call bear him <laughs> when he does that. Bear. Um, another thing people don't know about me is I have a nine o'clock rule. I don't oh. know if you know about my nine o'clock rule. That you don't answer the phone? I don't I don't engage with anyone unless it's an emergency before mm-hmm. nine AM or after nine PM. Oh. That's a good thing it. to that's mm-hmm. good. And I when grew I grew up, up when I grew up, I want to be just like you. Thank you. Yeah. I grew mm-hmm. up with that rule in my house before call waiting and before caller ID mm-hmm. and all of that. If someone called our house after 9 p.m., I was in trouble. And mm. I was like, I did not tell them to call. <laughs> <laughs> so all my friends knew there's a nine mm-hmm. o'clock rule. If you want to call me or talk to me, it has to be before. And look, the amount of times our phone rang at 8.59, you know, with my best <laughs> friends being like, guess what happened today? You know, so. Um, but then, And so I hated it growing up. But then now that, um, you know, everyone in my life really respects it and, and mm-hmm. follows it. And I, mm-hmm. I really do cherish that, that 12 hours that like that is for me and my family and, you know, sleep. Yeah. Yeah. And of I, course. Love it. I awesome. know, I know one more that she's, she's not saying yet. What is that? She hates talking on the phone. Yeah. I do. Thank you. Sounds, <laughs> sounds familiar. Yes. Very familiar. I do not like I hate talking it too. on the phone. I'd much the, rather the problem, text. And the problem is uh, I work three businesses, mm-hmm. three jobs, and they all require phone communication, mm-hmm. which is horrible, which is probably why I try a long time. This is our conversation. Anyway, hey, yeah. hey, business, business, yeah. two minutes. Yeah. All right. See you later. I'm not a Gabby. <laughs> Gab, you know. I'm mm-hmm. not chatty Cathy on the phone. Mm-hmm. I love to talk mm-hmm. on the phone. Even It's so funny, too, because my husband's so the opposite. He loves to talk on the phone, and so does his mom. He and his mom talk all the time on the phone. Mm-hmm. And, like, if my mom calls me, it's like, what's wrong? <laughs> 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 or like, so she doesn't or, like it either? Right, or, no. Or so like, you talk when it's necessary. Exactly. Yeah. Or we're making plans, or we're saying, like, this is happening this day, or whatever. Everything is by text, and then there's one mm-hmm. thing that's convoluted. Fine, I'll talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but she, she, like if even if I'll call to just be like, hey, you'll never guess what happened. She's like, what? <laughs> 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 all right, okay, cool, bye. <laughs> like, okay, all right, awesome. same. <laughs> and I'm like, no, come on, be surprised. <laughs> all right, tell me <laughs> what. Like, <laughs> I need, I need the whole, you know, the theater around it. Yeah, like the, the mm. setting the scene, the pomp the, and circumstance. Exactly. <laughs> this is my sparkle. <laughs> okay, Emily. Now yes. it's that time. Time we've all been waiting for. <laughs> Here it is. Tell, Tell us, us a story. story. Oh, well, 
know, once upon like a that? time. Good, yeah. huh? <laughs> <laughs> I really love it. Y'all did a great job. Um, <laughs> Thank you. So it kind of, this is so funny because when Karina, Karina and I started talking about this podcast, I was mm-hmm. like, I have a story that is just so, it's so sweet and just so like uh, crazy how everything comes full circle, mm-hmm. you know? So growing up again in Bayou Black, I lived next door to my grandma and then my other next door neighbor was my great grandma. <laughs> so <laughs> unbelievable. My, right. And my cousins lived with my great grandma. So my cousin, um, Jade was two years older than I was. So two years is right at that. Like, Oh my God, she's so cool. I want to do everything oh, she yeah. does. You know, like <laughs> yeah. she has experienced life. Yes. If, you know, she's nine yeah. and I'm seven. I, you yeah. Know? <laughs> she knows things. I know. <laughs> she's been around the block. So, yeah. On a bike. <laughs> So we would, I mean, we didn't have a neighborhood full of kids, you know, it was us. Like that was, it It was us, a cane field and a go-kart and like (laughs) that we just made do, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, And whenever it would rain, we were like, it's time for whispers. And our whole family's like, oh God. It's like, so whispers was our radio station that we had, that we (laughs) had, we had a recorder. (laughs) Um, an old, a fancy recorder that had a cassette tape in it oh, yeah. and we would press record. And okay. Let's, let's stop, not to interrupt mm-hmm. you, but let's explain to some of our viewers out there may not know <laughs> what, what a cassette for- is, yeah. which is a little rectangular device that used to record audio um, songs, different yeah. things like that, or Voice. your own personal voices. Yes. yes. And okay. So Sorry. so what we would do like throughout throughout the day, we would listen to the radio and we would record our favorite songs. So mm-hmm. we would just listen, we like, "Ooh, we like this one." We press record. <laughs> and then we'd stop. Okay? So we we made our own playlist. You know, flash forward 20 mm-hmm. years, I'm making my own playlists all the time for mm-hmm. classes. It's mm-hmm. so it's so crazy. So we would make our own playlist and you know, back then it's called a mixtape. But we would, so we would make yeah. our mixtape oh, yeah. and we had, um, we had our radio state, our radio show and we had our own jingle and I remember it if y'all want me to. Oh my yes. God, okay. please do it. Okay. So. <laughs> I mean, there's no way we're going to say no. Right. Okay. <laughs> no, that's all right. So it was Emily and Jade. Okay. Uh-huh. And so we would say, welcome to whispers, whispers, whispers. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then we would just start talking and it w- eventually one of us would laugh like that yeah. and you know whoever didn't laugh was the one that like was like all right so jade what's up today you know and like we kind of just interviewed each other so it was like the 19 emily do you realize what you did i had a podcast in 1989 that is, that is crazy <laughs> She had a podcast. She had a podcast in 1989. That no one ever listened to because we would <laughs> oh we would make copies of the tape and hand it out to our parents. And they were like, yeah, it was awesome. Like, like go out and get us some listen. sponsors, mom. <laughs> Do you, you still did. have some tapes? No, I wish. <gasps> oh, my gosh. I wish. Oh, my God. Yes. I need to call Jade and see if she, if she, re- I know for sure she remembers it because we were talking about it last summer. I was like, do you remember Whispers? And she's like, oh, my God. <laughs> I haven't thought about whispers in 20 years. I was going to say, this is one of those things where we should have called her in. Yes. And then yes. you go, whispers, whispers, whispers. <laughs> but it was the... <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah. So in 1989, I was the inventor of podcasts. Yeah. That wow. does not surprise me. <laughs> what <laughs> did? <laughs> Leave it up to Emily. She's yeah. always cooking something. Yeah. And I know, I know for sure we had new kids on the block and Paula Abdul on that oh, team. Oh, yeah. Like of absolutely. Course. Probably yeah. some vanilla ice. Oh my God. Uh, yes. <laughs> definitely <laughs> some Do- George Strait, Dolly Parton, Reba McIntyre. We, mm. we would ho- radio station hop a lot, oh, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, a little C- bit of vintage. C107.5 KCIL. Oh, and yes. Then, yeah. And then, that? oh God, Karina, you're going to love this. So, 107.5 KCIL was our Louisiana's country station, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So probably I'd say about 10, 15 years ago when all the stations kind of just like did a little shuffle, mm-hmm. they changed it to a Latin radio station. Ooh. And one time I went to listen to country and it was like, it was like, bienvenidos, uno cero siete. Oh, and, <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and it was like 
salsa music, I was like, oh my God, I've, again, I've come full circle. <laughs> I can't imagine you. Oh my God, I did this. I wish that it happened. That's right. <laughs> yes, all my Spangl- awesome. my Spanglish speaking Americans like me, like I, I cannot <laughs> speak Spanish, but I, I, I try. Think you're doing pretty. Good. I can try. I was like, wow. I know. <laughs> I know when Pitbull's <laughs> cursing. <laughs> you know, we should be the ones to bug all his entourage. This mm-hmm. is French, by the way, mm-hmm. and get him on the podcast. Oh my God! This oh, yeah. is it. This is my mission. Get now right on that in life. Hola, <laughs> hola, Pitbull. You, you got so a better Karina. shot than I do. I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, I know how to dress. <laughs> <laughs> you need yeah. to watch his um, behind the music. Yeah, uh, it's so good because they they talk about his childhood, where he came from, like mm-hmm. the streets of I Miami. Know, I know a little bit of his story because um, I think there was like a documentary on him at some point, and mm-hmm. he was talking about how he was writing songs. And talking about how he took care of his mom and whatnot. Yeah. Oh, I so think sweet. he was he he was into drugs at some point mm-hmm. too. Yeah, he was a drug dealer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. crazy. We talked about that a little bit. Uh, yeah, you're right. You're right. Mm-hmm. you're right. He was Mister Three Hundred Five, and now he's Mister Worldwide. I mean, mm. hey, he went from the bottom to the top. <laughs> <laughs> I can start talking in pitbull lyrics if y'all need me to. <laughs> That, that was the next thing. <laughs> yeah. you know, so one time I did take a little break uh, from dancing. I had gone, you know, probably 2018, 2019. Mm-hmm. Um, I had sold the studio. I took a little break from teaching and I was in the corporate world. And we went to David's company Christmas party in New Orleans. It was at the Roosevelt, which mm-hmm. where Dominica is. We've played there before. It was awesome. And the Top Cats were playing. Mm-hmm. They were re- a really great band. And they started playing Fireball. And they were oh. good. And I was like, David, I can't, I, I can't help myself. He's like, go, <laughs> go. Like he gave me like release the, the releaser. <laughs> yes. So released her into the wild. I started a conga line at the shell Christmas, <laughs> the corporate Christmas party. And the, like the entire, every lady. And I know oh, absolutely yeah. every woman in that place was in my conga line. Oh, and yeah. the, uh, the lead singer of the top cats was, he was like, what is going on? <laughs> like she's taking, it's her. he's like, this is about me. <laughs> like, is she passing? Yeah. Bought a band yeah, leader and she's saying you owe me four dollars. <laughs> That's right. Well, it's five dollars no. now. Inflation has hit. Oh, it is okay. five dollars now. She's probably <laughs> went like that. Hello. Yeah. And I, you know, you try. Yo soy Emily. Me llama yo mama. <laughs> so in that in that time that conga line I, is i think what put the bug back in me like okay i can't not dance i can't not dance this I have is to it go back. who cares about my I, hips that music is just to. so energetic and yeah it just makes you want to dance i have to dance and so yeah. um yeah speaking of hips you know i had to, i have some hip problems but we're working through them <laughs> and um i came back I'm, i don't teach zumba anymore quote unquote zumba i teach cardio party now and it's which just, is zumba which is pretty much Zumba. So yeah. Zumba needs to be 70% Latin music. And I love my Latin music, but it was getting very hard to make that 70% of the class. And I always did my own choreography. Zumba will send you choreography. They'll send you DVDs and, mm-hmm. and things. Um, to, but I never used it because I was like, oh, it's cheesy. Like, <laughs> I like my own stuff. So I never used it. I was like, well, why am I paying to, like, you have to pay licensing fees stuff so i'm like yeah. why am i paying to be a zumba mm-hmm. instructor like I'm i just know my do stuff it. just do it myself and i am group fit a group certified group fitness um instructor so through ace so mm-hmm. um I, I do my own thing now I teach at the wellness center um cardio party and then i teach pyt mm-hmm. which is pilates yoga and tai chi and I always say if you do that is torture yeah. by the if way if you do pyt <laughs> you'll be a pyt yeah. a pretty young thing yeah. but um it's a good balance it's it's a good balance to the high energy cardio i agree you know and for me it was more a mental block because mm-hmm. i kept thinking no i need to move i need to be high energy and now i'm going mm-hmm. more towards the yoga thing mm-hmm. which i and it's i kind of resisted for the longest yeah mm-hmm. He it, would know too how yeah. hard it is. It looks easy, but some those slower movements using your body weight as resistance is not mm-hmm. easy. I just yeah. had this notion, and I know it's so cliche. You know, you're a yogi, and you're like, um, <laughs> and you just relax. And I thought, how can I do this? Yeah. I need I, to move. I like granola and chakras. And, <laughs> no, <laughs> that's not for me either. 
My chakra is Latina. <laughs> well, I think Emily. that needs to be the, the title of this episode. Yes. <laughs> My chakra is Latina. That's our new motto. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Of course, oh anytime. my God, it was a blast. We we got to know. I don't know if I can still miss worldwide on a very personal and intimate level. Thank yeah. you for being here tonight. Thank you. Thank y'all for having me. It was yeah. so much fun. And remember, those who don't believe in magic will never find it. We all have stories to tell. What's yours? Bye now. Taking you on style, Emily. Thank you, Emily. Woo. It was yeah. so nice having you. Dale. Uh, uh, <laughs> take care, guys. Till the end. <laughs>